What was your favorite part about being here in China? Um, seeing some things there, seeing um improvement. Seeing improvement. That's kind of my favorite thing. Um, I saw the colors and they were moving, and I saw just things that I didn't see out of my telescope that I saw before. Mm -hmm. I'm Rachel Smith, this is Carly Smith, and um, I'm her mother, and we are from Houston, Texas, right outside Houston, Humble actually. And we are here because Carly was born with optic nerve hypoplasia with septo-optic dysplasia. So she um, has more, she doesn't have as much of this SOD. Um, she doesn't have to take anything but growth hormone. So she's not a typical SOD patient in terms of all the hormones they have to take. Her main concern is her eyesight and the, the growing, the growing uh, factor. So, um, we found out when she was three months old, and I immediately started researching, you know, what can they do because where we're from in the States, they just give you the news, and they say, take her home. We don't know what this means because optic nerve hypoplasia is such a spectrum. They could be completely blind, or it could just affect one eye a little, a little bit, but at that point, she didn't really react to light. She didn't do a lot as a baby. So we did that, we took her home, but I just didn't want to accept no for an answer. And so pretty much every month of her life, I've spent researching the internet and I just type in her diagnosis and just type in help or cure or anything, research, anything. Nothing has ever popped up. And then in um, October, late October, I had Googled the same thing I Google every month her entire life and it vacay popped up. And so we were so excited. We immediately, uh, I sent out a request for contact and um, someone got back with us and we immediately started fundraising and we're here in May. And um, it was the first time anybody's ever even said the word research to us or anything. We knew we were coming here completely experimental, but we had such um, support from family and friends at home and everybody wanted to see, and I wanted to see too, because it was the first time anybody, nobody has ever even given us any, anything, that anything's even being done in the way to help this condition. So it was so, I mean, I remember how I felt. My heart literally sank when I read the website and um, immediately started reading blogs and people and testimonies. And some people I read it didn't help, but some people I read it did. And that was the risk we were willing to take for our daughter. Because at the end of the day, I was going to do anything I had to do for her. So here we are. We did um, seven treatments. She has her last one today by IV, and uh, she had three spinals, and four. this will be her fourth IV. And after about the third one, we started noticing some things, and we weren't really sure if it was coincidental or not. So we just didn't really blog it, and we were just like, okay, good, Carly. We just, we don't wanna encourage, I want it to be her. You know, I wanna know what's really changing. She started noticing some things from the floor um, on the TV. She started noticing some things around the room. Again, her dad and I would just look at each other and go, let's just give it time. And then yesterday was our last day. We knew we were going to get out of the hospital, and we took her out to the um, one of the little polar ocean worlds, and she was able to, she has a monocular that she sees distance. Um, her right eye is the better eye, so she always uses the monocular in her right eye. Um, and I think she was just tired, it was the end of the day, so she just moved it over to the left eye and her face just, the expression on her face just, it made me so happy. She looked up at me and she said, Mom, I can, I can see out of the monocular. And we know, you know, I have to begin to ask her and it wasn't the same image that she can see with the right eye, but usually that left eye is the bad eye. It is the weaker eye and it just kind of drifts. Even now it'll drift away sometimes but it's such a small hole, it's hard for her eye, the untrained eye that doesn't see hardly anything, to pick up images, especially out of the monocular. So I got online today, I started emailing her VI teacher at home, and um, you know, I, told, I called my parents, because that I know for a fact. That's something I can factually say did not happen before we came here. And um, you know, she can tell me. She knows what she, I know what she can see, she knows what she can see, and, the left eye usually does not, out of the monocular, able to pick up anything. So that was so neat. I mean, that that's I know it's baby steps. 
and some people don't get results till they get home and to see that even on our last right at our last IV treatment was just it made it so worth it and it gave us gave us hope and you know baby steps to, to what it can do and if we have to come back and do it again and you know we'll do that but we're excited to go home and follow up with doctors and for the next year and see the progression her ophthalmologist was excited um, we she you know not like yes I'm 100% behind you because I don't think they can say that and we understand that but when I asked to follow up when I get home the eye doctor was way more willing than the endocrinologist we did not have support from my endocrinologist as a matter of fact she said I do not want you to do this she tried to take us or she did take us off growth hormones so we have a little bit of a battle to go home into her side um, but since um, we didn't approach it with any doctors or anything we just approached it with this is what's being done in terms of research I put Becky's website on mine I put uh, stem of course the stem cells China where they could read all the blogs and I just said this is my website I told them everything I knew and said the link is on my website you know I tell them vision for Carly .com. I put it on every advertisement everything I could think of and um, that was they would they would go because they'd say oh I know so much more and everybody just kind of educated themselves and then the money started pouring in I had a way to donate on my website and um, I think I think education, letting people know what it is. Um, the IV didn't, it wasn't really a problem. It was just it was easy. What do they do? Um, they just they put something through your IV, and then they put another bag of stem cells in there. Um, and then there's this cord and it goes through the cord. Feels, um, when, the, when it's going through, it kind of feels cold. Anything I, to be scared of? Not really anything. Pretty easy? And you just sit there and chat with your friends, huh? Yeah, there's and people that go with Yeah. Uh, we always get friends in there and we just sit around and talk. It's pretty you easy. Call it a stem cell party? I've heard. <laughs> Some people have. <laughs> yeah, that's what we've heard. They do. That's. I think that's what they called it. The people before us were calling it stem cell party. I think everybody back home, they were the support and the love. And even now in China, I get e my emails are flooded. I get up early every morning and check my email because everybody back home, is, I feel the love all the way out here. So definitely thank everybody back home. We're so thankful.